Okay, I think uh, I think we are recording now. Um, as you might know, there has been a couple of couple of uh, interviews with me over the last few weeks. There was one discussion between me and uh, Gatsad, and um, and then there was another thing, a shorter one, where I was compared. I was coined the Swedish Jordan Peterson, which was quite nice, and. Uh, uh, people who have seen these these clips, they have told me that they would like to hear more about my my books and my views about certain things. So now, therefore, I, t I intend to give a couple of very short lectures. It's not going to be like one hour and 24 minutes like the interview with God Saad, but very short, uh, something like 10 minutes. So I'm actually looking at the computer now, and uh, I will try to keep it very brief. So this first one will be about uh, actually some things that me and uh, God Saad, we never managed to approach, namely my book, um, The Trojan Horse, A Leftist Critique of Multiculturalism in the West. And I just want to give the, the absolute basics of this book, or maybe not the basics, but the most important ideas in, uh, in this book. And this is this book, in a sense, revolves around a... I thought about calling it a paradox, but I'm not sure whether it's a paradox, because a paradox is a seeming uh, contradiction, as uh, Václav Havel writes about in some of his uh, very interesting uh, plays. It's not, a, it's not a paradox. It is an actual contradiction, because I... And, and the reason why it's a contradiction is because I think that the left is deluded. And I have to say also before I go on that I have a, a lot of sympathy for the classic left, I would say. Uh, classic socialists, classic feminists, who were all, and also left-wing liberals and actual liberals, and all of them basically trying to acquire a more modern society. I think that is worthwhile and I have all the respect for it. Uh, the unions, movements and the suffragettes and everything. This is something different. This is a politically correct left and um, the deluded radical feminists, etc. These are the groups, uh, these are the subject of my criticism. So uh, the contradiction here is very simple. Uh, the contradiction here is that the, uh, the current multiculturalists and the diversity advocates and this entire entourage of uh, politically correct leftists, they are deluded because they are actually not at all radicals, they are not progressives, even though they claim they are. And the entire entourage of the media, the establishment, and academia, and uh, politicians who belong to this, this, this entourage, this big, big group of politically correct ideas, they have been fooled. I don't know by whom, but they have been completely fooled. I think this is an intellectual swindle, and I will explain why. This is very simple, and I think it is. It is pretty obvious. If you don't, if you disagree, tell me, uh, and don't read my book. Or maybe you should read it because I think I have I, a, a couple of good arguments. This is the point. This is a very short point. Um, uh, multiculturalists they only like to talk about uh, one particular idea. They only want to talk about one thing. That's the most important thing in their entire agenda. This is the idea of roots. Roots, I would say, is at the core of the entire multicultural analysis. Um, the virtue of roots, the importance of roots, and the, the fact that roots are fragile, we need to foster them, we need to fuel them, and along with it comes the importance of identity, you know that, and the importance of belonging, of course, and the importance of background, and the importance of, what more, history, of course, and the importance of past wrongdoings. And this is all wrapped up in a nice sentimental framework of pessimism, a pessimistic worldview, and, uh, and all of these things that comes with it. Because the, the, uh, the world is a hostile thing, and we need to protect, we need to hunker down and cover 
and unite as one nice, homogeneous, fine, sweet entity, where inside of it there is no disagreement. Right. So this is the... Now there is an airplane flying here. I'm not sure if you heard it. Anyway, this is the gist of the multicultural agenda. Okay. Now, I've talked five minutes. Now there is only one other group in society um, where these ideas are equally cherished. There is only one other group equally hypnotized by these ideas. What's the name of this group? I mean, this is of course a simplification, but this is brief. It has to be pretty simple. This, the, the name of this group is the right-wing populists. That's it. And I'm not going to finish now because then you will say, you know, you didn't give a proper argument, but but a proper reason to believe you. The reason why you should believe me is that why you should believe me is that the right-wing populists, they also talk about endlessly about roots. They talk about background. They talk about the fact that we must unite, and they talk about identity, of course, and they talk about us, and they talk about history. They talk about. Uh, past wrongdoings, they talk about, they have also a kind of pessimistic worldview where we have to unite because the world is a terrible place and the other ones, they are getting at us. They are trying to get us, they are trying to kill us. Right, so, so these two groups, they say the same thing. And um, there is one difference though, and I think this difference is not important. The right-wing populists, when they talk about roots, whose roots do they talk about? They talk about our roots. They talk about Swedish roots. They talk about Swedish identity. They talk about uh, the British Empire. They talk about Europe. They talk about America. It's us. It's our own backyard they are defending to the teeth. With all this romantic, sentimental, idealistic, uh, self-eulogizing kind of paraphernalia and rhetoric. The multiculturalists, when they talk about roots, and when they talk about identity, it is the identity of the other. The roots overseas, the background of foreign exotic cultures. It's not about us, it's about other cultures, other religions, such as Islam. You see, so, so uh, while the, the right-wing populist, this is the core of my book, this is it, basically, you don't need to read it. Anyway, this is the core of my book, while the right-wing populists never stop going on ranting about us. The multiculturalists, they never stop ranting about on behalf of cultures and, and, and religions overseas. And then I have an idea about this. I have an idea about this. I'm going to expand this next time, but, but for now I'm just going to say this. I have an idea about this. And this idea is that the people who pretend to be anti-nationalists, the people who pretend to be anti-racists, the people who say that they are against right-wing populism, they are against fascism, they are against national socialism, they are in fact under the surface, die-hard nationalists. Because what they are doing, I would claim this, and I say most of them what they are doing, is that they are packing a suitcase with their frustrated feelings of nationalism. Where all of these sentiments are like put in a suitcase, and then they take the next intercontinental flights, Emirates, Air France, anything, and then they land on a different shore and then they freely nicely unpack their suitcase and out flies the most horrendous nationalist romantic ideas about the past, about suffering, about identity, about the, uh, the virtue of, 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 of keeping together and about the dangers of the other and now the other is of course not exotic cultures but it's the West or Israel or Sweden or England, or Germany, etc. And, and when they have landed on, on, a, on, a, on an exotic shore, they know 
that they can be as nationalistic, as ferocious, as aggressive, and as primitive as they please, because they can do it with a good conscience, because they are doing it on behalf. Now I disappeared here. I guess I need to press this again to reappear. I'm not sure if there was a cut here. It doesn't matter. They, they can do it with a good conscience because they know they do it on behalf of uh, a downtrodden group, a quote-unquote, quote-unquote, downtrodden group. And so they are on the right side of the entire spectrum. They are not nationalists on behalf of the West or of any country in the West. They are nationalists on behalf of the other, on behalf of any culture, any religion, any religion, any, any country overseas. And this is okay. So my point here is that the, the danger here, and this is where I think the, all of these violations of pr political principle comes into, that the point here is not to be against nationalism. The point here is to be against dangerous forms of nationalism. And nationalism is only dangerous at home. It might sound very strange, but that's the way I would say the multiculturalists argue. Nationalism is only dangerous at home. It is not dangerous overseas. So take an intercontinental flight and unpack your suitcase and out flies all these fanatic ideas about, about um, the virtue of keeping together and the danger of anybody else. And, and if a Swedish person or, or a British person or American would say the same thing, you can't because the people of whom you are aware wouldn't accept it. You just can't. But you can say exactly the same thing on, be on behalf of other cultures and other religions. And I'd like to finish off by, by citing um, George Orwell. I'm going to talk more about him next time. He says that, that um, this attitude is a way of attaining salvation without altering one's conduct. It's a way of attaining salvation without altering your conduct. Which I think sums it up perfectly. And uh, yeah, as you might understand, this is too good to come from me. This is George Orwell, of course, one of my heroes. Actually, one of the biggest ones. Uh, well, that's it. That's it. Thank you for listening. I will get back to you very soon with some more talks about politics. Bye-bye.